Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today with a Lawn Fawn Tiny Gift Box Cat and Speech Bubble Background Card. I am a huge fan of the Tiny Gift Box add-ons from Lawn Fawn and using them instead of on the gift box, which I love to do as well, but using them to create cards. Today we're going to use the Speech Bubble Background to create this really fun kind of different background. We're using the one, the, there's two different speech bubble backgrounds. There's the stitched one which just is going to give you the stitching lines. We're actually using the one that die cuts the speech bubbles. I've die cut that from some Lawn Fawn mermaid cardstock and then we're actually going to layer this over another piece of mermaid cardstock. So very tone on tone. It's going to end up making the speech bubbles really subtle, but it's giving us a great little space to stamp sentiments. I'm going to combine sentiments from both the Critter Chatter Pets and Say What Pets stamp sets and then stamp these sentiments and or images with the Lawn Fawn Clear Embossing Ink and Heat Emboss with White Embossing Powder. I'm purposely using my MISTI so that I can stamp multiple images at once. You can see here I actually stamped about six things at one time, added the white embossing powder, and then heat set that. Then I can put it back in my MISTI. Again, I'm going to grab the speech bubble backdrop frame, layer it over the top, clean off my stamps, and then I'm going to stamp some of the same phrases and some different ones. And I'm going to continue to do this until I have filled most of the openings. Now there's one big opening kind of on the left hand upper side that I'm going to leave blank. I did play around with it thinking I might add something there. And ultimately I decided it would be a great spot to add an extra sentiment later on. In fact, I didn't do it till the very end of this card, but I can stamp it in another color or use another color of cardstock, something to set it apart from the rest of the speech bubbles in the background. Now all of those little speech bubble die cuts you can actually save then and use for other projects. So if you are needing a speech bubble for another card you have all of these fun little options. Now after I have stamped and embossed the phrases I'm going to use for my background I added Lawn Fawn double sided 1 8 inch tape around the four sides of my speech bubble backdrop. Then I'm going to adhere this over top of my stamped and embossed background. You can really see that one speech bubble opening that I've left now. For the bottom edge of the card, off camera, I die cut two simple grassy hillsides out of Lawn Fawn Cilantro ink. The taller of the two hillsides is going to go in the background. I love to do two borders when I'm tucking something in between the two. So whether it's an image or a critter, I like to have two borders. I, die, I use two of the dies from that simple grassy hillsides die collection. Before I adhere the border in the front, the one that will be in the foreground, I'm actually going to put this in my MISTI and take sentiments from the Critter Chatter Pets stamp set and line those up along the bottom edge of the card. This is going to be the rest of the sentiment. This is a very sentiment heavy card and a, also a die cut heavy card because we have so many stamped and embossed sentiments in the background in the upper part or the sky of this design. The sentiment will read, you're the cat's meow, translation I appreciate appreciate you a lot. So from the Critter Chatter Pets we're using translation colon I appreciate you a lot in parentheses. I've stamped this with the clear embossing ink again and will heat set with white embossing powder to really make it pop off of the cilantro cardstock. I'm just going to make sure that I have everything covered really well, tap off that excess and then heat set my border. You can see that there is a powder in the background 
That's going to help keep the embossing powder hopefully only on the stamped part of the image. Now once this has cooled all the way, I want to make sure and take a dry rag and buff away any of that excess powder from the background. Then I can adhere the border in the foreground along the bottom edge of the card design. So here is the background of our card. I've also die cut three of the tiny gift box cat add-ons. One cat is die cut from smooth white cardstock and we are using some of the great little accessory pieces to make this a black and white cat. That's going to include adding the layering piece over one ear to make one of the ears black, the little circle around the eye, and then we'll add an additional spot and tail here in a little bit. I'm using the Lawn Fawn glue tube to glue all of these different little layering pieces where they go. I also have an orange or kind of yellow tabby and we'll have a gray cat as well. I'm going to take the piece and we're going to kind of line up that bottom edge from the front with the bottom of the cat. So you want to shift it down just a little bit. You don't want it too high. We're going to shift that down and die cut the stripes from the side of the cat. In fact, I think I tape that down a little too high. So we'll come back to that. Let's show that again. We're going to take that piece that cuts the stripes from the side and we're going to line up the bottom with the bottom or that kind of top edge I guess you want to call it so that the stripes are die cut below the whiskers. Then we're going to take the other little stripey piece and line up those notches between the ears making sure that is hanging off the edge of the cat as well. What's so important about this is you want it to hang off the edge so it die cuts the stripes from the sides and the top of the cat. Then I'm going to place glue on the back and I've die cut the layering pieces that go behind. So there's this great little circle, like half circle kind of piece that goes along the top edge that I've placed back behind the top of the cat. And then next, I have die cut the layering piece that goes behind the eyes, nose, and mouth from black licorice cardstock. And then finally, we're going to finish with the layering piece for the stripes. You can see how these three fit together perfectly. The yellow cardstock I'm using for the cat is number two pencil, and the orange is canned pumpkin. All cardstock that I'm using for my card today is from, excuse me, from Lawn Fun. I, there are a couple different tail options for the cat as well, a fluffy tail and then the more standard tail, and you can use whatever you like for these cute cats. I originally thought I'd put the tail over to the side, but I ended up placing it in the back. I'll come back to that and fix it here in a minute before the glue has too much of a chance to dry all the way. You'll see it at the top of the screen, kind of back behind the card project I'm working on, my final cat is light gray and it'll have some dark gray as well. That's going to be the Lawn Fawn Fog and Narwhal cardstock. I want to build all of the cats and then I'll glue them in place. I'll go ahead and tuck the black tail behind my black and white kitty too. From the gray, light gray kitty, I did take the paws and die cut those from the bottom front edge. I've also taken the little piece and die cut the stripes from the top of the cat's head and layered that narwhal cardstock behind and layered a black licorice panel back behind the eyes, nose, and mouth. I die cut the paws so that I could have this particular cat holding something. It's going to be holding a whole bunch of fish. So in addition to the cute little, all the different accessories that you can use to make these cats all different ways, you can also add some little fish or a ball of yarn. Instead of just doing one fish, I die cut several fish from both number two pencil and sunflower cardstocks. I'm going to have 
three of them in the paws of this little gray kitty. Once I have them kind of where I want them to go, I will take the Lawn Fawn Glue Tube Liquid Adhesive and put a little dab of glue back behind those to hold them down in place. All of these cat examples can just as easily be used on the little tiny gift box themselves. So maybe you want to make little treat boxes that coordinate with the card that you're giving. That would be so super fun as well. Now that I have my cats mostly put together, I am going to go ahead and tuck them in between the two borders of grass. I wanted to fill in the entire border with kittens like they're hiding in the grass here. Now because there's a black circle around one of the eyes on the black and white kitty, I layered some narwhal cardstock with that layering piece back behind instead of the black licorice. I've also die cut the cat ears again from ballet slippers cardstock so that I can layer those ballet slippers pieces to the insides of their ears to finish off their sweet little faces. Also from ballet slippers cardstock, I've die cut cheeks for each of the kittens. You'll see me adhere those here in just a minute. I place some little dabs of glue back behind the ears on the cat and I'm going to place an acrylic block on top to help hold that down and then add dabs of glue in each of the ears before I place the little layering piece inside. You can also use tweezers if they have a long enough reach to kind of pinch that down, hold them flat against the card so they dry nice and flat. The addition of some pink to each of these images adds such a great little pop of color. I'm using the Crystal Katana to pick up any small die cut pieces like this and put them exactly where I want them to go. Almost everything is done on the card now except for finishing details, which is always my favorite. We'll take a white pen and add highlights to the eyes and the noses on each of the images. Already their faces have come to life a little bit more. Then I'm going to take a fine tip black pen and draw in some eyelashes on a couple of the cats. I'm also going to take dabs of glue and the crystal katana and add the pink cheeks to each of the kittens. If you like the look of the little pink rosy cheeks but don't want to add the extra layering piece, you can always take a small ink tool and some ink and color that in if you want to or even use a marker. I've got a couple more fish that I die cut that we're going to tuck along the border as well as a ball of yarn. The yarn was die cut from chili, uh, pardon me, chili pepper cardstock. I was really kind of careful when I peeled it up and didn't lose any of the little die cut pieces inside of it, so it's got more texture than actual die cut. I added black to the eyes on any of the fish that you can see with a black glaze pin. You can see that that one speech bubble is still wide open and that's going to be the perfect place to add an additional pop of color in the upper part of the card which is really a lot of blue. There's a lot of neutrals and a lot of blue going on here. So we're adding a little pop of color with our red ball of yarn and then our red speech bubble. We're going to take this Lawn Fawn glitter pin and add some glittery cheeks to the little pink cheeks on each. It's going to be a real subtle glimmer. And here's that black pin that I was talking about where I'm just going to draw in some eyelashes on two of the cats. I'm going to take my white side fold card base and attach the panel right to the front of this card.
Using the speech bubble and a sentiment from the Say What Pets stamp set, I'm going to stamp, stamp these on chili pepper cardstock using the Lawn Fawn clear embossing ink. I'm going to use the powder tool first to help keep the embossing powder right on the stamped image. I've stamped the speech bubble. I'll clean off that stamp, line up my sentiment, stamp that right in the middle, and then I will heat emboss both at the same time. I love how the red really, or pardon me, the white embossing really pops off of the red cardstock. There was a little area that I didn't think I got stamped very well over there along the right side. I'm going to line up my stamp again and kind of just re-stamp that speech bubble and then heat emboss that before die cutting this shape with the coordinating Say What Pets speech bubble die. We're going to glue that speech bubble right to the center of the die cut in the background. And that is going to finish off this really fun tiny gift box cat and speech bubble backdrop card. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this die cut heavy card featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel to never miss a card making or paper crafting video. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.